We left off here in the last video comparing the mean and the median and realizing that if the mean is less than the median, that means that the data set was skewed left or negatively skewed. And if the mean is greater than the median, then it's skewed right. So let's use that idea in order to figure out which of these three graphs um, matches the mean and median combination I gave right here. All right, so I'm going to have to zoom out just a little bit so we can see a little bit. Okay. So don't forget a couple things. One, that the mean is the balance point. That's always useful. And that um, the two of them being close together will mean that it's symmetric. But of course, they're not going to be exactly the same. That's what the squiggly equals is back here. So it doesn't mean they're exactly the same. It means they're basically the same, which actually leads us to the easiest one of these three to figure. So when you look at these three, if you look at this combination right here, the mean and the median are basically the same. So that would mean that your graph is basically symmetric. Well, the only graph that accomplishes that is this one right here, histogram number three. So let me say that this is A because the mean is approximately the same as the median. There we go, right? And it's symmetric, roughly. I mean, nothing's going to be perfect in this class. That's one thing you got to learn right away, right? It's roughly symmetric. All right, then. So now that leads us to the other two. So A is out. That leads B and C. Now B has the mean being greater than the median, and C has the mean being less than the median. So when the mean is greater than the median, that would mean that it's skewed right, correct? So this is letter B, because the mean is greater than the median, which means it's skewed right, or positively skewed is another way to put it. All right, that leads us to this one, which must be C, but let's see if it's true. This is C because the mean is less than the median. And if the mean is less than the median, that would imply that your graph is skewed left, which this graph is. And there you have it, right? So roughly the same is mostly symmetric. Big tail to the right means skewed right. Big tail to the left means skewed left. When it's skewed right, that means the mean is greater than the median. When it's skewed left, that means the mean is less than the median. Alrighty then, let's talk about the mode. Now, we've already run into the mode a little bit in Chapter 2. It's the most frequent observation of the variables that occur in a data set. Or in the case of a class, it's the modal class. It's the group or category that occurs the most frequently. So for example, let's talk about our pet data. So I knew I left it in there for a reason. So if I go to Stat and Edit, or Number 1 or Enter, either way, and I can see in here I've got a whole bunch of different numbers. Now the problem with this is that I can't tell which one occurs the most often. It looks like 1 right this second, but of course it might not stay looking that way as I move down the chart. So I'm going to go to stat and I want to use number two or number three, either one. I want to sort the data. Sort A was sort ascending or sort D is sort descending. So I'm going to sort it in ascending order, i.e. going up order. And I want to tell it to sort list L1. So second one, enter. And it's going to say done. So when I go look at the data again, there, I can see I have three zeros, and then I can count one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eleven ones. Not nearly as many twos or threes or fours. All right, so I can tell that one is the mode, right? That's the most help you're going to get from a calculator. Other than that, you're going to have to just figure it out yourself. Okay. Now what about the Red Wings players below? So the mode birth month is February because February has the highest frequency. And you'll notice a lot of people are surprised when they see this. They think, oh, hockey's going to be fair. It's all about talent and so on and so forth. So every month should show up just as likely as any other month. And that's actually not the case with hockey. Um, in general, with hockey especially, because of the, the system by which young children are, are um, 
raised into hockey at very young ages. The, the children that tend to be the very best tend to be January, February, March, because they're the ones that are the oldest um, for the Canadian cutoff for um, junior leagues in Canada. So there's a lot of debate in amongst hockey circles about changing that system because it pr produces precisely this issue. All right, then let's find the mode of this data set. One, two, three, four, five, six. And the answer is there isn't one, right? None exists, or you could think of it as either none exists, or you could think every single one of those numbers is a mode, right? Because they all occur the most often, whichever way makes you happy. All right, then this would be one and three. Ah, so we're discovering the problem here, hopefully, that there are some issues with mode. Let me type some of those up one second. There we go. Some disadvantage of the mode. Well, you saw them right here. Sometimes you have data sets that have no mode. That particularly happens with continuous data. Better put that in. Particularly happens with um, continuous data because every single data point has its own set of decimal places. So I mean, if you're going to the thousandths place, the chances that two numbers would be exactly the same is very rare. Um, some data sets have two modes, three modes. Some data sets have four modes. It can be kind of messy. You know, How can you have four different measures of center? Um, and the calculator doesn't find it. And quite frankly, Excel doesn't find it. StatCrunch, I think, doesn't either. Minitab does find it. But often computer programs are a little bit fluky about it. So if it has all these problems, why do we even talk about it? And the answer is one very important one, which is that this is the only measure of central tendency available for qualitative or nominal data, and sometimes ordinal as well. Um, so I'll put that in, sometimes ordinal too, right? Because if you're talking about gold, silver, bronze, there's no real way to, to measure that and, and find the, the average, if you will, because that's what central tendency is, is the average. Well, you can't really do that for nominal data or qualitative data. It's just not possible. So qualitative normal, nominal leaf this way, and qualitative ordinal, right? Those are the only real options. Somewhat also, that's the only option for quantitative ordinal as well, which is the Likert scale, which again, I agree with, but um, that's another discussion for another time. All right, and the other advantage to it is that it is extremely easy to calculate. I mean, you do it in your head a lot of the times so without thinking. You just think, oh, what was the thing that occurred the most often? Whether or not that's a true representative of the center is a different story, but that's what you think. 